That's what that painting story is about. Yeah. It's about what happens when you are able to just give yourself permission to want the things that you want. So tell the story. Okay. So I'm probably going to sob mean, it's hysterically. It's, I'll, I'll shorten you, you, it. I'll yeah. shorten it. So the, the bottom line is, is that so in 1990, I was a senior in college at Dartmouth. And my parents came to visit from Western Michigan. And we went to this place called Simon Pierce, which is a famous glass blowing mill. And as we walked into the restaurant, I had an experience that you may be able to relate to. And that is I walked in and I immediately saw this painting hanging on the wall. And it was about the size of a door, only horizontal. And it was a Vermont landscape. And I was drawn into it immediately. Like I was no longer in that restaurant. I was standing in that field. I could feel that breeze. I had never, ever had an experience like that with a painting. Have you ever had an experience like that with art? No, I mean- not like that. Not like that. I mean, my, yeah, my sense was that this is very atypical for you. Very. So I kind of lost it. The, 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 the restaurant was quiet. And then I leaned back. I'm suddenly kind of back in the moment. I'm like, I'm going to own this painting someday. It just, that was what was right there. And I looked at the price and it said like $3,000. I'm like, not today. And I went back and I sat down and that was it. But the painting never left my mind. You see, there's something called the Zygonark effect. I, I always say it wrong, mm-hmm. but it's like there's a checklist in your brain that when you have a moment where you're like, this is important, your brain puts it on a checklist. Yeah, and there's like a notch. Yes, a notch happens. And now your brain as part of the filter in the brain is always going to be kind of scanning the subconscious to let anything into your mind related to that incident. It can be positive, by the way, like with the painting, or this is how trauma happens too. Mm -hmm. Like you have this high intensity emotional experience that notches something in your brain and now your brain kicks in to remember. So uh, bottom line is uh, I always thought about that painting. Years go by. Whenever somebody would say Vermont, I'd think of the painting. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Never wanted a painting before. Was not an art student. (laughs) It's going to law school. It's not like you're out collecting art. No, 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 no. And so I, you know, fast forward the story 10 years and my, uh, Chris and I are are engaged and we're going to go up to Vermont to see the leaves. And immediately I'm like, we got to go to Simon Pierce. I got to show you the painting. So we pull up to the mill and we walk in and right in front, there is boom, a painting by the same artist, Gail Shepard. And I'm like, oh my God, it's here. And we race all around the place and it's gone. And the funny thing was, and this is the way your brain works, Chris was more disappointed than I was. I literally turned to him and said, it's okay, dude. Like, it'd be weird if we're still here after 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm going to track this thing down. I actually said to him, you know what's going to happen, Chris? I'm going to be able to buy this like 40 years from now. It's going to be hanging in the corporate lobby of some building. And I'm going to have to track down the owner and pay like quadruple the money they pay. But I'm going to own this damn thing. I have a mission, yes. So a couple of years pass and... um, it's my birthday. I think I was turning 30. And Chris says, uh, Chris gets a couple people to give money. And he said, I could buy anything I wanted with it. So I had, a, I had what, 500 bucks. Now I'm pregnant at the time with our first kid. I should have bought a crib or stools, but for whatever reason, the Zygonark effect takes over. And I'm like the painting. So I call the mill and I get this guy on the phone. I'm like, uh, you know, I want to buy a Kale Shepherd piece. And I said, could you send me Polaroids? And he's like, sure. And I tell him the budget and he goes, I'll, I'll send you Polaroids of some of her smaller things. Mm-hmm. And she's like blowing up in the meantime, right? Yeah. She's a very, very successful Vermont landscape artist. And so I, <laughs> I, I, I say to him, you know, by the way, there's this one painting. And I describe the painting I had seen over 10 years ago. And he said, well, that was way before my time, but I bet Gail will know. And I'm like, Gail, you know, Gail? He's like, of course I know Gail. She like lives in, in down the road. Here's her number. So for two days, I paced around the apartment with 500 bucks in my pocket, driving Chris crazy. Cause I felt like, what am I going to say to her? And I must be a weirdo. I've been stalking this lady. I've been thinking about her for 10 years. I can't afford a painting. You know, what, who am I to buy a painting? Like what the hell? So finally, Chris is like, would you call her? I'm going to call her. You're driving me crazy. Uh-huh. So I call her. And I start talking a mile a minute and she was amazing. 
And then um, I said, by the way, there is this one painting. And I go and I explain this painting. There's a stand of poplar trees down the center and a big mountainscape behind it and this beautiful blue Vermont sky and geese flying in formation overhead. And I could hear her thinking on the other end of the line. And she said, you know, Mel, I've done so many large scale uh, paintings over the years. I'd hate to mistake the one you're talking about. But I'll tell you what, what if my husband and I meet you and Chris at the mill at Simon Pierce? And we'll walk all around and have lunch and I'll tell you the stories behind every painting. And if you don't see what you like there, I'll take you back to my studio, which is a couple miles down the river. And you can look at everything I'm working on. And if you don't see anything you like there, then you can go through all my slides and see if you can find that painting that you saw 10 years ago. And I said, deal. So a month passes. We go up to the mill. I walk in. We meet each other. She's amazing. She's like twice our age, just an incredibly cool lady. She's walking around as we're walking around looking at these paintings, Rich. I've got, I'm like eight months pregnant. I'm realizing these are 10 times the amount of money that I have. Mm -hmm. I can't afford this. Like I don't, I don't have this kind of money. And I'm getting like more and more into that imposter syndrome. What am I doing mode? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I'm meeting somebody I idolize. I don't deserve to be here. Right, wasting her time because yes. she thinks she's going to get a payday out of this. Correct. We sit down and she goes, now that you're sitting down, I have something to tell you. Um, she said, there's only been two times in my career as an artist that I've done two studies of the same piece and your painting is one of them. It's one of a pair. She knew all along. She knew all along. She was playing games with you about not knowing which painting. Yeah. And she said, the sister piece to the one that you saw all those years ago is sitting in my studio right now where it's been for the past 11 years. I start sobbing. Everybody's like totally emotional. Her husband's like, you should have seen her when, you, when she was on the phone with you. It was like she saw a ghost. So we get in the car. And we drive to the mill. And when we walk in, there in the center of this massive kind of barn studio space is an easel with a painting taped up with painter's tape on it. And it was the sister to my painting. There were slight mm -hmm. differences, not as much movement in the grass, but it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. It was as if time suspended and I was standing before that painting in 1990, saying it would be mine. And there I was 11 years later, standing in front of it. And then I realized, oh my God, I can't afford this. And Chris walks over and he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, just promise me someday, like promise me that I don't need a, a jewelry. I don't need a car, like just promise me you will buy me this thing. And he kind of leans over and goes, hey Gail, how much for the big one? And she said, um, Mel can have it for 500 bucks because clearly when I was making it 11 years ago, I was making it for her. Yeah. And so it hangs in my kitchen. It's on the back of the book. Um, this is the galley though, right? Yeah. So wait, is it in the... Is it in I think the, so, yeah. Yeah. And um, it's a reminder every day that your mind is. is designed to help you get what you want. I never stopped believing that I could make it happen. And when you tell your mind what's important to you, there is extraordinary science that proves that your mind has a live and ever-changing filter, a, a live network that changes how it views the world, what it lets in, what it blocks out. And if you program your mind correctly, and if you're clear about what you want to create, your mind will help you get what you want.